How is that? Something unusual, which we would like to do at the web. And uh, by the way, this is, well, if you consider Switzerland, Europe, but this is from the European continent too, so that's good. Bertrand, please join me on stage. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to have you. Please, Bertrand, please help me welcome Bertrand Picard. First, I, I'd like to have a, such a cool jacket as, as, as yours, really. I can become a partner and you'll get one. Can I, oh, okay. <laughs> can I fly it? Uh, we'll make a two-seater probably in the future. Very cool. Well, so you can be our first passenger. Oh, is that a commitment? It's an invitation, <laughs> Loic. <laughs> Please, Bertrand, <laughs> I, I'll let you uh, explain us how this works. Good morning to, to all of you. Yes, as, you, as you've seen on the film, we've made it. We've made it through the night with a solar-powered airplane flying with absolutely no fuel after eight years of work of an entire team. But normally, when I, I give a speech and present this airplane, I do it to a normal audience. That means to people who have no idea of what is adventure, what is pioneering spirit and I introduce them to the new world of exploration. And here today, I have to admit, I feel as a complete beginner. <laughs> because you know what is adventure, maybe even more than me. Can you imagine that for the entire life of Solar Impulse until now, we've been communicating in normal media, <laughs> conventional media, and here, when Loic invited me to talk to you, I discovered that half of the world is relying on a completely different type of media. And maybe if you don't read the New York Times, you have never heard about Solar Impulse. So it's like meeting for me absolutely <laughs> new face of, of the world. Although I have to say that pioneering spirit is something I have in my blood since a very long time, since the time where my grandfather made the first flight ever in the stratosphere in 1931, and now it's obvious to fly in the stratosphere. My father made the deepest dive ever in the oceans to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, and now people explore the oceans. I flew around the world in a balloon in 1999 together with Brian Jones, and here also everybody was saying it is impossible, and it turned out to be possible just because we tried. So we see that pioneering spirit starts with something that everybody believes is impossible until everybody says it was obvious. But in the case of flying around the world in a balloon, I have to say that it was almost impossible. If I show you this picture, it's just to tell you that we started with 3.7 tons of liquid propane and we landed after 20 days and 45,000 kilometers nonstop with 40 kilos. And you see on the silver tank on the right a part of what's left. So when I really understood how much dependence we had been on fuel, then I made a promise to myself. I made a promise that I would make another flight around the world once, but with absolutely no fuel on board. With solar power, with batteries, with whatever, but with no fuel. And I think it matches quite well with the history of pioneering. When the capsule of my balloon was brought to the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, the Smithsonian Institute, together with Apollo 11, the Wright Brothers Flyer, the Spirit of St. Louis, it was six months before the end of the millennium. And I thought, OK, the millennium is finished, and it was a great millennium for exploration. Conquering South Pole, North Pole, the Mariana Trench, space, the moon, the Everest, everything had been 
conquered. There's nothing left to conquer, but there's so much more to explore and to achieve. And in that sense, I believe that we have in the future to take impossible goals, as impossible as going to the moon, and try to achieve them, but for a better quality of life. Fighting poverty, human rights, medicine, energy, sustainability, fair trade, and so on. And probably one of these goals could be summarized as trying to be independent from fossil energy. Why that? Well, for the environment, I would say partially. Partially, because these pictures we know since 50 years. The Green Party is talking about pollution, saving the planet because it's miraculous to have life floating like this in the cosmos. Okay, that's true, but the solutions were always wrong. The solutions were about less mobility, less industry, less comfort, less, less lifestyle, and nobody agrees on that. So we got used about these pictures. And now we speak of climate change. But climate change is also big misunderstood. Because when we speak of climate change, we speak about a huge problem that costs a lot. Well, how can you motivate people if you speak of problem and cost? As a medical doctor, I know that a problem is called a symptom. A symptom has an origin, and an origin has a treatment. So in the case of climate change, it's clear that there is a reason. The reason is the fact that we are dependent on fossil energy, coal, gas, oil. But fortunately, there are a lot of solutions. These solutions are technological. We have technologies today that allow us to reduce our consumption of oil by at least 50% if they were used today in a massive way. And this is profitable. This brings new workplaces. This brings new products and open new markets. And especially when we see the price of the oil going up, we see how to save our world and how to save our industry. It's to rely on new technologies. So look at this really nice exponential curve going up, the price of oil until 2007. And look at this beautiful exponential curve going down until 2007. Those are the price of the shares of General Motors on the New York Stock Exchange market. So we see that all the people who are completely dependent on fossil energy have no future because the public starts to understand where they have to go. So new technologies are vital for the future, but much more than that. The mindset of the people is crucial, because these technologies exist, and they are still not used, because so many people are not pioneers. So many people are afraid of the future. People are not like you or us. They try to rely on certainties, on common assumptions, on habits. And this is what we have to kill. And this is a little bit what I'm asking you to contribute to. You have an always increasing power. You are people who spread a new way of thinking and a new way of doing. And this power you can put it to bring people to have also more pioneering spirit and to see the future with less certainty and more new technologies and new ways to do. This is what we try to do on our side with Solar Impulse. If a solar powered airplane is able to fly day and night with no fuel and maybe one day to fly around the world, nobody else will be able to say any more truthfully in the future that these technologies cannot be used for cars, for heating systems, for air cons, for computer, for electronic, or for whatever. Of course, when we launch a project like this, it's not easy, otherwise everybody else would have done it. So when we made the feasibility study, we knew that this airplane would need to have the wingspan of an Airbus 340, that means 64 meters, but it should not weigh more than 1,600 kilos, less than two tons. So the weight of a car for the size of an Airbus 340. 
and it should not use more energy in solar power than the equivalent of a small motorcycle. Those were the parameters we had when my partner, André Borchberg, and I, we launched the project in 2003. Without any partners, without any sponsors, without any logo, without a euro in the pocket, and without any team. But we decided to launch it officially because we wanted to burn the bridges behind us that could allow us to move back and to give up. It is so tempting to give up when we try something really difficult. And I think it gave a huge confidence to partners, to scientific foundations who helped us. You know how it is for fundraising, but you normally you use VC for uh, your fundings. We don't sell anything except a, a message and a philosophy and a mindset. So we work with partners and we work with individual uh, supporters also, people who have adopted a solar cell, people who pay to put their name on the airplane. You can follow that on solarimpulse.com where you see also where we got our fundraising from. Big partners, of course, on the other side, like Solve, like Omega, like Deutsche Bank, companies that are also pioneering. Can you imagine? They put money into that project when we had only a PowerPoint presentation. We had no airplane to show. And it took a long time until we could show it. Because we have 70 people in the project, as team members, but for the first four years, it wasn't so spectacular. These people were working behind computers in order to design, conceive, calculate a type of airplane that had never flown in the past. And when we were ready to build it, what did we do? We asked to airplane constructors to subcontract the airplane. And nobody accepted. They all said, it's impossible. So big and so light, it will never work. Well, maybe you've heard that also when you had your own project and you wanted to launch a new idea. So what did we do? We went to people who had no idea about airplanes. We went to a shipyard, boat manufacturer. And this guy had no idea it was impossible, so he did it. He just built all the big carbon fiber pieces. This is the fuselage. 50 kilos, just one person can carry it. All the structure was made with carbon fiber in collaboration with that shipyard until the plane could fly. Of course, in the beginning, it didn't fly with solar power. It flew just to test the structure. So we still had a huge amount of people who said, it's impossible, it will never fly with no fuel. Our society is dependent on fuel. This airplane with no fuel is just irrealizable. Well. It flew through the night, as you've seen in the film. For the entire day, the batteries were filled with the solar power during the flight, during the climb to 27,000 feet. The plane spent the night until the next sunrise and carried on the flight. And I believe it is exactly the message that our society, our world, needs to understand. If this airplane was too heavy, if it was using too much energy, if André in the cockpit was flying unstable and using too much energy, then the plane would have crashed with empty batteries before sunrise. And in our world, if we don't manage to implement these technologies, if we don't manage to think sustainable, if we don't manage to invent a new future, just to invent a new future, we will never make it to the next generation before a major disaster. So we see that an airplane like this is a demonstration of what can be achieved today with new technologies. And when we landed, it was the credibility of all the speeches we had done since eight years. We were always telling it must be possible. These new technologies, this mindset could allow us to be independent on fossil energy, but there was nothing to prove. And it was so frustrating to speak all the time about something that we wanted to do without being able to do it. And suddenly, we did it. So it's clear that a speech like this one today is only relevant because we had achieved it. For the, next, for the last three years, I always told to Loic, I'm not coming, I have nothing to show. Now we have something to show. We have this airplane, but it's not just an airplane. You've seen the Monet exhibition, 
yesterday evening? Well, this is not Monet, this is Magritte, Belgium painter. And I like very much this painting. It's a pipe, and underneath it's written, this is not a pipe. Well, solar impulse is not an airplane, or at least not only an airplane. It's a demonstration of what can be achieved if we manage to think out of the box, if we implement adventure in our daily life. That's why speeches like today have just one goal. It is to have more people who join the Solar Impulse family. We have a lot of thousands of people who follow us on the web. We have people who follow us in the conventional media. We have people who just understand a little bit what we do. But the goal for us is that people would understand why we do it. Not what we do, but why we do it. And this is why I have to say that this speech for our project, for Solar Impulse today, is probably the most important one that I have ever made in the last eight years. Because if you understand why we are doing it, maybe the other half of the world, the one who are not relying on conventional media, will also be able to understand it. If you can relay not just what we say, but this mindset, stop to rely on the past, stop to rely on old habits, stop to rely on certainties, and try to see the future with the eye of the entrepreneur, with the eye of the pioneer, with the eye of the explorer. This is what our world needs. Because if we continue to live as we live today, in such an unsustainable way, we're condemned to a huge economical crisis, with the price of oil going up to $300 a barrel and no cheap energy of substitution, because we will not be ready with the technologies that could be implemented today. So we need political visions, and we need political involvement. Basically, we're all like on this slide here. This is the last picture I did during the flight around the world in the balloon. It's one of the windows of our capsule. It is frozen by the moisture of the night, and on the other side, you have a rising sun. So you see that on the other side of the eyes, you have the light. On the other side of the problem, you have the solution, but much more than that. On the other side of our fear of the unknown, we have the spirit of exploration, innovation, creativity, pioneering, and success. So for us, it's obvious that we have to go through the eyes to find the light on the other side. But so many people have not understood that. So many people believe that it is safer to suffer in the eyes they know, rather than to take the risk of going through the eyes to find the light on the other side, to find better solutions, to find success, to find an another future. These people need to be encouraged, need to be led, need to be helped. And who can do that better than people like you who are in contact with millions of people across the world. So the only thing I ask you is, can you help us to promote more pioneering spirit into the schools, into the population, and of course, into the political world? Because as long as the politicians resist, we will never be able to implement all the goodwill we have in our hearts or in our minds. But all together, I believe with this new type of media that you're using and that I discover these days, thanks to Loic and thanks to you, I think all together we can do it. This is what I really think we can do together, and I thank you in advance for that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Bertrand. This, wow. So how do we follow you? You go, see? Yeah, and I have to say again, um, Bertrand is very rare, so we're really happy you stopped by here. He would like to meet you, uh, so please, you know, don't hesitate, uh, not on Ustream. Um, by the way, we have nearly 2,000 uh, people watching it. Out you, you're saying, you're like, think, you know, outside of what you see, so we're seeing like yeah. 1,000 here, and there is 1,500, 2,000 there. And so, 
Can we like talk to you? Can we meet Absolutely. you? You have some time or you disappear already in your plane? No, no, I stay until I two o'clock. I have two people of my team. It's Ella Borschberg and uh, Gregory Blatt who are here with the same jacket. If you have any ideas, if you want to get in touch with us in relation with us, just talk to them, talk to me, go on solarimpulse.com, just see what we're doing, why we're doing it, and, and just write to me. I answer to all the emails I, I get, and uh, I think we can really do something valuable together. Solarimpulse.com. Bertrand, thank you so much. I, I, would spend, I would spend the entire day with Bertrand, but unfortunately we have to end. See, Fumi is, uh, agrees, he's coming especially from Japan. <laughs> Please go and meet Bertrand and his, his team, and let's, go, let's help him in his crazy uh, and visionary ideas. Thank you so much, Bertrand. Most welcome. Thank you, Loic, for inviting me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.